Indonesia is set to host Southeast Asian leaders for the ASEAN summit later on Tuesday. The political situation in Myanmar, as well as disputes in the South China Sea, are likely to top the agenda. Florence Louis has more. Labuan Bajo, East Indonesia, is best known as the gateway to the Komodo National Park. This week, it's hosting leaders and foreign ministers from the region, who'll be here for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Summit. We try to make sure that during our chairmanship, we can retain the status of ASEAN as one of the most dynamic regions in terms of economic development. Economically, ASEAN is one of the world's fastest growing regions, although growth and prosperity vary drastically by country. There is also a gap in uh, human resources development. And so, so this is the work of ASEAN to narrow the gap here inside ASEAN. But in the process, countries like Cambodia, Laos and Myanmar, they have made themselves closer to China. China Coast Guard. Five, three, China's interests have sometimes overshadowed the blocks. Its sweeping claims over much of the South China Sea, which borders many ASEAN nations, have been a source of disagreement and sometimes conflict. In 2012, ASEAN foreign ministers failed for the first time to issue a joint communique after a standoff in the South China Sea between China and the Philippines. The Philippines had accused Cambodia, a close ally of China, of blocking any mention of the dispute. Indonesia, as the current chair of ASEAN, has said the group will intensify talks with China to finalize a code of conduct for the disputed South China Sea. Another issue that will loom large over the meeting is Myanmar, which has descended into civil war since a military coup in 2021. Indonesia could at least publicly float the idea of suspending Myanmar from the bloc, but also suggest to other ASEAN members that even if they don't agree on that, that they should adopt a statement that recognizes that there is a disagreement among the bloc and that the bloc needs the help of the rest of the world. Indonesia says it's working on quiet diplomacy and has met many stakeholders, including the shadow government opposed to the coup, to try to resolve the crisis there. Well, we can speak now live to Florence Liu. He is in Jakarta for us. Florence, what sort of pressure is being put on the ASEAN nations to restart the peace process in Myanmar? Well, the pressure is mostly coming from civil society groups in ASEAN countries as well as international human rights organizations. And they've called for ASEAN to fully engage all parties that have a stake in the situation in Myanmar. We're seeing ASEAN doing that, acknowledging that they've held talks with not just the junta, but also the shadow government and ethnic armed organizations. Having said that, ASEAN's actions still fall short of what um, civil rights groups are calling for. Among them, tougher sanctions that really hit the military's pockets. And this would be sanctions that target the gas and mining sectors. Um, also, a clearer message to the junta that what they're doing in Myanmar is not just unacceptable, but also illegal. So perhaps um, failing a suspension of, ASEAN, of, of Myanmar's ASEAN membership, then disinviting not just the leaders from the leaders' summit, but also senior officials from meetings throughout the year. ASEAN, though, is going to find difficulty reaching a consensus because the members are divided. Thailand, for example, is known to have particularly close ties with Myanmar's military. And the situation in Myanmar is becoming more urgent, not just because the humanitarian situation there is worsening, but because Indonesia is due to hand over ASEAN chairmanship to Laos later this year. This is a position that member countries take turns holding. And Laos, being an authoritarian one-party state, there's very little expectation that that country is going to do much to put pressure on the junta to end violence in Myanmar. And Florence, other than Myanmar, what else is going to be on the agenda? Well, I think economic issues will take top priority. The theme of this year's meeting is ASEAN Matters, the epicenter of growth. And this is particularly important as many regional economies are still um, just recovering from the impact of the pandemic. Then there's also the um, matter of the roadmap for membership of Timor-Leste. That's been pending for years. Now, Indonesia has also said 
that it wants to tackle human trafficking. That's become a much bigger problem in recent years. Um, fake job recruiters lure their victims online, promising them attractive jobs with good pay. And then these victims are then trafficked to places like Myanmar and Cambodia, where they're made to perform cyber scams and cyber crimes. Now, Indonesia has recently freed 20 of their nationals from Myanmar, and Philippines has reportedly rescued about 1,000 people um, from about um, 10 countries. So this matter is quite urgent, and countries will be sitting down to talk about how they're going to tackle this situation. Thank you for that. Florence Louis there for us in Jakarta.